All right, so my name is Jason Burton. I work at Stage 2. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, detecting uh, pineapples via Raspberry Pi, via a small um, piece of hardware that we built um, that kind of functions as a physical security token. Um, it's more so just a research project, so so kind of detail. Um, if, if you haven't had experience with pineapples, exactly what pineapples are, um, how they function, what um, things they take advantage of, and how we can sort of counteract that. Um, uh, most of my days, I'm uh, taking advantage of those things on the red team side, but uh, this is more of a blue team sort of research, so uh, hopefully you guys get something out of this. Um, this will be a pretty quick presentation, probably 20 to 25 minutes, so definitely feel free to leave any questions you want in the Q&A section um, or in the chat, but um, I'm glad that we could at least put together this virtual presentation for everyone. Uh, so just to kind of uh, begin very quickly, I'm going to kind of go over exactly what a pineapple is and how it works. Um, some of the hardware uh, alternatives for pineapples. Um, not everyone has access to a pineapple. Um, some people find that the $40 to $120 price range is a little too steep for them. Um, so I'll kind of go, go over um, how I approach things um, before Bryce decided to send me a pineapple um, via the client, the Glynet AR150. I'm um, do very, very quick hardware teardowns on um, both just to, to ensure that they're using the same chipset. Um, the attacks that Pineapple uses, the Karma and Mana attacks um, that are still used to this day. Um, so how we go about detecting those things in the field, uh, and then of course the actual hardware itself. And then we'll all just kind of bow our heads and, and pray to the demo gods um, and hope that our demo works out all right. Um, so firstly, of course, uh, what is a Wi-Fi Pineapple? Um, I find that some um, most people um, don't have exposure to some of the internals, at least from the software perspective of what a, uh, what a pineapple actually does. We'll kind of uh, very lightly go over those things. Like I said, this is a pretty pared down presentation to fit in our 30 minute time slot here. Uh, so in short, uh, it is essentially man, man in the middle made easy um, for uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, in some cases, especially with the Tetra and with homemade solutions, you can use up to three radios um, without any sort of lag. Um, you need one for monitoring, one for stations for people to connect, and one for clients to give any of your victims uh, that internet access to ensure that devices connect successfully and that they don't know that they're actually being attacked. Uh, in the last decade or so, I mean, there's been, there's been six generations of Pineapple. We're on generation six now. Um, the current view that you see in the bottom and the right-hand side of your screens are uh, the current generation of software. Um, for the people that have been around a while, you might remember the sort of like green and black and red um, sort of hacker view that Pineapple used to be. Um, and it was, you know, you felt cool using it, but it was a real pain to use. Um, things have definitely gotten much, much better. Um, the module system is, is actually, um, I wouldn't say a pleasure, but pretty easy to use. Um, so if you are looking into uh, utilizing the Pineapple for some of your operations, um, I would, I'm not going to heartily endorse it, but uh, the modules are very easy to use. Um, so there's definitely some cool things that you can do that not a lot of uh, teams are doing out there. Um, so like I said, when I started, I didn't actually have access to a pineapple, um, but I knew I wanted to build this detector. Um, so it actually turns out that there's a pretty wide community uh, for building the pineapple um, using uh, off-the-shelf hardware that's much, much cheaper. Um, so I kind of started my research here on uh, Hack5's official hardware page where they, they mentioned their Atheris uh, AR9331 chipset, um, which is a relatively common chips, chipset, um, and especially in embedded devices, Atheris is um, all over the place. Um, but we can see here they use that uh, system on chip. Uh, so of course we, we use this as our jumping off point, and we see where else uh, this chip is in use. And of course I mentioned the, uh, the Glymet AR150. Like I said, this is a pretty popular option. And it's very inexpensive, and um, you'll see when I do a quick teardown on this, it's really just one chip. It's, it's really not a complex system. Um, like I said, it's $25 or under. Um, sometimes you can find them used for $15. Um, so if you're really looking, looking for just some simple research, a very easy way to build a Pineapple Nano is to simply buy one of these and flash uh, the Pineapple firmware onto it. Um, as I mentioned, you can see on their page, this, uh, the page on the right there is directly from Glynet's page. They say that they use the Atheris 9331 SOC. Um, so as far as we know, they use the same chipset and we're ready to go. Um, there's also a USB port on the back uh, that you can plug a hub into um, and uh, connect all the devices you would like. That being said, um, it really only supports two additional devices along with the internal chip. Um, and even then it's pretty slow, but it does, it does work pretty well, um, especially for the secondary and tertiary radios. 
Um, so just a very, very, like I said, very quick tear down here. Um, it has an SCC ID on the back there, obviously, you know, it's, it's an approved device. So um, we could do the tear down that way, but uh, it's only a single chip. So uh, you'll see in the next slide here that we just decided to tear it out and just kind of see um, you know, how it worked. Uh, that chip in the center there, that, that little black guy is a uh, Netheros 9331. Um, it does it does have two Ethernet ports uh, with a WAN and a WAN were actually reversed in software. Um, there was, <laughs> if you do end up doing this on your own, and um, of course these slides will be shared out to you guys, uh, you'll notice that there are some quirks with the software. Um, if you are to uh, install the newest firmware, there are some software changes you have to make. And I go through how to build the firmware in just a little bit here. Um, you also need power and reset buttons uh, during setup. Um, so those are also included on the climate, which I made things very, very useful. Uh, so these are the internal uh, chip photographs. You can see here uh, on the right side is the SCC ID for the Pineapple Nano. Um, and you can see, you probably can't read it there, but it is a Netheris, I promise. And Netheris AR9331. And we see the same chip on the left. So as far as we know, um, at least the wireless hardware is compatible um, and everything else is sort of, uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, the good thing to note here is that the uh, Glynet AR150 uh, comes with OpenWRT preloaded, um, which is a, a huge help to us researchers because OpenWRT is open source and you know we can build basically anything on top of it. Um, to that end, uh, that link in the center there for GitHub, the OpenWRT CC from the Domino team, um, they have a repo specifically for the Glynet AR150 that builds um, any OpenWRT image directly for it. Um, and if you want to do this yourself, you can go directly to the Hack5 firmware page, pull the latest firmware, um, and extract it with Firmware ModKit, um, and then essentially just copy those files into uh, the OpenWRT uh, CC slash files directory, um, update, install, make the menu config, and um, you're good to go. You're ready to flash uh, with, that, with that image that's been built. Um, there are, like I said, there are a few software quirks, especially in the later versions. You kind of have to make sure that it's, it's all PHP, so it's relatively straightforward. Um, there's a lot of documentation online, um, so feel free to Google around. If you have questions, of course, feel free to reach out. Um, but so what happens once we build it? Um, like I said, it's running OpenWRT, so if we go to upgrade the firmware directly from Glynet's administration panel, um, we can literally just drag our built firmware um, onto their installer and flash it on. Um, which again is just a researcher's dream. Um, it's been very, very easy to research with this device. Um, and there's of course Pineapple running on our new Glynet AR150. Um, if you'll note, I mean, Pineapple's been around for a long time. Uh, it's gotten more and more difficult to exploit new client devices. Uh, clients have gotten smarter and smarter over the years. Um, so in our case, we needed to apply uh, both secondary and tertiary radios um, connected to a legitimate wireless access network uh, uh, to ensure that clients will go to connect to us um, directly. And uh, a lot of new clients will check to ensure that they have internet access. Um, so we need to provide that internet access to make sure that those clients will complete their association with our evil access point. So this is my actual installation that's on my desk next to me over here. Um, it has uh, on the left side, you see the Glynet uh, AR150. On the right side is a USB hub with a spare uh, Edimax uh, little USB Wi-Fi card that I had. And of course, on the, on the south side there, you see the uh, very popular Alpha N um, wireless that's used for uh, the injection uh, phase of our, of our attack here. So all in all, there's an internal radio that's acting as our station. Uh, the USB, um, the, the small USB there on the right, the Edimax um, acting as our monitor, and then the uh, Alpha acting as our client. So uh, very, very quickly here, I'll just kind of go over the Karma and Mana attacks that Pineapple, uh, the Hack5 Pineapple uses, um, or has used in the past uh, to exploit clients. Uh, a, a long while ago, um, some, some researchers came up with uh, an attack called Karma. Um, and it used to be that devices would broadcast probe request frames uh, that contained what's called a PNL. And those PNLs had a list of networks that it uh, wanted to connect to or preferred to connect to. Uh, so what Karma did was uh, it would clone one of those ESSIDs um, and then start up a custom network stack that would just let people connect to it. Um, and of course, uh, on the clients, uh, they don't mind when a single BSSID has multiple ESSIDs. Um, that's obviously no issue. Um, it's still not an issue today. Uh, but in this case, Karma, again, this was back in 2004, 
uh, it was basically an automated um, evil twin attack. Uh, so uh, very quickly, I, I want to say in, in just a few short years, um, this attack was outmoded in favor of MANA, which was the updated version of this attack, uh, which still works on devices today, as long as um, the internet uh, is available to that client. Um, so nowadays, uh, devices probe for networks much less frequently, uh, but they do probe for networks. I mean, you notice when you come home from a long day at work, your phone connects to your Wi-Fi, so it has to probe for that network, and your uh, access point will respond with a directed probe response. So your device is uh, broadcasting to the ESSID and BSSID um, with all Fs in, in, um, in hex, uh, looking for anyone to respond to that. Uh, so what MANA will do um, is essentially respond to anyone um, that asks for an access point with its MAC address, uh, with, with its own destination MAC. So if you probe for a random ESSID, it will also respond to that as long as uh, the software allows it to. And again, these are some very simple custom network stats that some researchers came up with. Um, very, very simple um, kernel uh, driver modifications um, that resulted in some pretty major damage um, around the globe. Uh, so like I said, MANA uh, responds with directed probe responses, and we have ways that we can take advantage of that, which I'll uh, kind of talk about here in a second. Uh, two uh, stipulations here for our, our detection of the pineapple's attacks is that the pineapple filters by, uh, by default, it used to be that they were open. Um, now when you set up, it asks you if you want your filters to be open or closed. Um, you can still, uh, of course, use the MAC SS and SSID behaviors. Um, that's more of a passive detection. Um, I include a link later on uh, from a repo called PyDents um, from some, some researchers that have done some work in the uh, last few years uh, that do some passive detection of the Wi-Fi pineapple. Um, but of course, we're after this active detection. So in order to uh, do that active detection, um, our pineapple has to accept um, our probe request, uh, which, which of course means um, it, has to, uh, it has to go through the filter. Um, of course, with the advent of MAC randomization, um, a lot of uh, red teamers and operators in the field uh, tend to open up those filters a little bit more, um, which allow us to uh, kind of get around those filters in, in a lot of ways. Uh, so you might have wondered what DRAIN actually stands for. A DRAIN stands for didn't realize all insecurities needed naming. Um, I, I really hate acronyms, and so this was my, uh, my acronym for them. Um, so that's uh, how, how do we go about uh, attacking uh, specifically MANA. Uh, Karma is not really in use anymore. So uh, two assumptions that we make when we uh, go about our detection methodology. One is that the beacon response is enabled. Um, this is by default, and this is pretty much expected with most, if not all, uh, Wi-Fi operations. Um, beacon response lets an arbitrary, um, lets you respond, respond to arbitrary clients. So when a, a beacon request comes to you, you respond to that beacon with your, uh, with your MAC address. And of course, like I mentioned, uh, the filters uh, must not exclude our detector. Um, it is possible that filters aren't there, um, but in that case, uh, you're probably safe to be on that Wi-Fi network anyway. Um, Wi-Fi is a pretty old protocol with uh, WPA3 coming around. We might, uh, things might change a little bit here. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the coffee shop attack is still something that happens on a daily basis. Um, so like I said, drain only covers uh, active detection, and there's that link right there if you want to check out PyDense. Uh, Wi-Fi Hunter has a, a several uh, repositories that cover passive detection. Um, some of the code keys will updating uh, as, as of 2020, but uh, most things still work, so definitely give that um, give that a shot if you feel like, uh, if you have a pineapple at home or if you uh, build one out of the Glynet AR150. But how do we go about uh, detecting this in real time? Um, so our detector, um, which we build on a Raspberry Pi Zero W, um, firstly just sweeps the active stations in the area. Um, this is a pretty common thing that happens, um, you know, on a second to second basis, on a millisecond, millisecond basis um, by most client devices. Um, in our case, we're simply going to note all of the uh, MAC addresses in the area that respond to our sweep. Um, and then we send probe requests for a random string um, to the broadcast BSSID. So basically we're saying, um, I'm looking for this remembered network. Does anyone in my current area have that network? And then uh, simultaneously we listen for a beacon response. Uh, so we have two things that we're looking out for. Uh, one, that uh, a response station's BSSID matches the probe request. So that's that random string that goes out. If we get a response to a random string, that is very, very suspicious. There is not a lot that should be responding 
uh, to, to, a, uh, to a, a random string. Um, and then of course our uh, second confirmation is um, that uh, one of those VSS IDs was in our initial recon. So that means it's an active station that's listening uh, for connections and it has responded to um, a random string uh, for association. Um, so both of those together uh, means that more likely than not we have um, a pineapple or potentially a, a different malicious device. Um, one other assumption that we'll make here is that an attacker uh, has changed the sort of default MAC addresses to ensure that uh, none of this stuff is, um, you know, easily passively detectable. Um, obviously, there are uh, lots of other things you can do. Again, look at PyDense for uh, some examples. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's a, we only need to make sure that uh, we're only detecting um, the, the active detection, the active pineapple itself. Um, so, on to building our detector. Uh, how do we build our detector? It's a very, very simple. It's almost um, entirely in software. Um, we use a modified kernel that comes with the uh, Kali NetHunter repo um, that lets you do monitor mode. Um, in, in our case, we actually don't need it too much. Um, we can actually use some uh, simple built-in IWS and IW scan commands um, that come with the kernel by default. Uh, it actually turns out, if you don't know, that if you provide a specific name to IWS scan, it will actually send a probe request to that name. Uh, so we, we can sort of scrape the output and use that um, with a default device. We don't actually need this uh, modified kernel, which is, uh, again, great news for um, sort of mass producing this, uh, if someone were to mass produce it, um, is that you, you don't need a, a secondary uh, radio to make this work. Like I said, we're using the Raspberry Pi 0W. Um, it has 2.4 BGN, it doesn't support five, uh, obviously for now to cut down on costs. Uh, so, you know, that might be a vector um, you might want to think about. Um, you can obviously load the software onto anything that supports the same code. Um, it just has a standard mail 2x20 uh, GPIO. Um, you can sort of see the 1x8 LED matrix that uh, takes up that 2x20. Uh, it's the Pimeroni Blink. It's a great piece of uh, little software. It comes with a, um, a very easy to use library. So if you haven't uh, used anything from Pimeroni before, I um, highly recommend it. It's uh, a little bit on the higher end of price. Um, but very, very easy to use, and the libraries are, are really well done. Um, so in that, in that way, we've uh, built this small piece of hardware that's uh, kind of giving us a visual indicator if there is a pineapple in the area. And that case is just a Pi Bureau, uh, a Pi Bo 0W uh, case, very, very cool looking case. So uh, this is something that you just keep next to your uh, laptop. Um, of course, you could also implement this fully in software for various operating systems as well. But that way, you don't get to have a cool little uh, light up device next to you, which is uh, obviously the goal here. Um, so, with that, uh, with 20 minutes in, um, it's demo time. Uh, so, again, we, we bow our heads uh, in honor of the demo gods. I'm just going to reshare my screen to ensure uh, that I can give you guys my console output. Hopefully, I haven't lost too many. All right, hopefully you guys can uh, you guys can see this okay. Um, so I'm connected to that Raspberry Pi on the left, and uh, on the right side um, is just our live pineapple detector. There we are. Um, so I'm just gonna start up the, uh, the scanner here, which is, uh, again, our drain attack. And you can see, um, hopefully you can see it's not too much lag, um, that every few seconds our Raspberry Pi is simply scanning um, for any potential open networks in the area here. Um, it's just got some nice solid green lights and um, you know looks all cool. So uh, I'm just gonna just gonna uh, scroll uh, <laughs> I'm gonna come back here and just plug in this pineapple um, and it's gonna boot up here in a second. The glories of uh, virtual conferencing. So now um, our, our pineapple has been plugged in and it takes uh, about 30 to 45 seconds to start up. Um, so right now our, our Pineapple detector is uh, just sweeping the network, looking for open networks, and that's it. And it just does it in a loop until it finds um, any open networks that are potentially uh, in use by Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm sorry, by, by Pineapple. Um, once it finds uh, an, a potential open network, a potential target, it will target those in a next phase, um, and it will send those directed probe requests and uh, see if it can uh, detect uh, that specific uh, BSSID as a Pineapple. So hopefully here in a few seconds, we'll, uh, we'll see this pineapple start up.
Okay, we can see it found a hidden network with the, the SSID Bobo dead beef, which if you're familiar with that is not a normal MAC address. <laughs> so this next phase here after the, three, the third time, the third scan, it will go and try to probe that one. So it says it's found a pineapple and now our pineapple detector is flashing red, meaning there's an evil device in the area and that we should discontinue our wireless access immediately. Uh, this is the string that of course generated um, for the probe request. Um, and then we can see that we got the, uh, the SSID back to us from that probe request and that it was the same Bobo dead beef uh, MAC address uh, we got directly back um, that was in the initial recon phase. So this is an evil device. Um, we should obviously uh, not be using Wi-Fi in this area. It's very evil. Um, and that is uh, about it. Um, if I just go, just head back to my presentation here. Just go to this questions page. Um, that's uh, my email address. Um, if you weren't aware, uh, I work for Stage 2 Security. Um, you can feel free to send me an email or, or uh, you know, I'll be on the B-side Slack um, for uh, the you know, majority of the year uh, if you have any questions. Um, if not, then uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Jason. There is one question in the QA for you. Oh, sure. I'm clicking on QA, but it's not actually doing anything. The question says, what would have happened if there were multiple pineapples in one area? Gotcha. So uh, in our case, it actually, that phase two portion um, actually does individual probes for each one that it finds. Um, so our code specifically will just uh, probe for both of those individually. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, if someone has more than one station, um, you probably have a, a bigger issue on your hands. Um, but our code uh, will just simply probe those individually. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's about it. Wondering why I can't view these questions. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, this code will, uh, will go up um, on probably GitHub, if not the Stage 2 Security GitLab or something similar um, pretty soon here um, if anyone's interested. And of course, um, feel free to hit me up with any questions.